I am in a bit of a funk. Not for any great reason that has been imposed on me, but mostly by reasons of my own creation. I ordered one of the new M1 MacBooks. M1 Max. And you know, I thought that would speed up my workflow. It'd be great. Future proof, all that stuff. And similar, at approximately the same time, somebody offered to buy my computer. So I thought, hey, everyone seems to be getting their MacBooks, you know, a little bit early. I'll probably get mine early too. That turned out to not be the case, and now I don't have a very fast computer to be working on. I'm used to being able to edit videos and rapidly push out content. I'm currently using a eight-year-old MacBook instead of a brand new MacBook. And it's not even top of the line eight-year-old MacBook. It's getting the job done, it lets me do some tethered work, but video editing it is not made for, unfortunately. So. Let's see how we can get through this day. Oh, and I'm recording on my iPhone because I intend to edit this on my iPhone because it is much more capable of editing than the eight-year-old MacBook that I am currently using. And as you can see, I still have some wireless audio, some super convenient wireless audio. And so this video is also going to be a review of the Seven Rims Remo mic. Just plugs right into the lightning port or you can get a version that plugs right into the USB-C port. And it's powered by the phone. That's fantastic, super simple. I like simple. Especially when life is a little more complicated than I intended it to be. So it's been about a week now that I've been without a powerful editing computer. So I've been getting some stuff done. I cleaned up the wiring in my network closet. Yes, that's right, of course I have a network closet. We've got a 10 port switch here. We've got our fiber modem. We've got a UPS. We've got another UPS. I also clean up the crawl space. And I found some old toys down there and my son has been playing down here. So that's a fun little secret place for him to be hiding out and having fun. Giant pack of Costco, Costco paper towel because where else can you fit that much paper towel in your house other than a storage space? something interesting, a UPS, this isn't exactly proper, plugs in to an outlet here, or rather an outlet plugs into the UPS, and then it carries on throughout the rest of the house, which leads me into the next thing that I did this week. In my kitchen, in the cat cupboard, I ran wires up from the basement with a Cat6 drop and power coming from the UPS, it comes out here to the new Wi-Fi 6 router. So this is acting just as an access point, but it is hovering right above my studio here so that in the future, when this MacBook finally does come, I will have Wi-Fi 6 and be able to use very high-speed, reliable Wi-Fi. <sighs> but it's not here yet. And now I have a portrait shoot coming up, so I'd better clean up a little bit. And I also have to put the cats away because one of my cats cannot be trusted around strangers. Not you. You can be trusted. You'll just whine and cry for attention. Stop it. Stop picking. Stop picking. This guy. You cannot be trusted, so you're going to hang out in the gym. Bye, Maggie. Pat, pat, pat. Pat, pat, pat. Because what we're testing are these Freewell prism filters. And if I was using a flash, this would be incredibly difficult 
to work with. It would just be guesswork. So these would be easier to use outside, but the weather hasn't been great lately and some of my previous photo shoots fell through. So I'm gonna try to get this done in the studio for the most part. Then after that, we're going to continue testing the TT Artisan 25 1.0. Oh. 0.95 crazy APS-C lens unfortunately it's been a bit disappointing and I'm going to compare it to the full frame also seven artisans 35 1.4 because this is a 37 1.5 equivalent lens so these are approximately the same but this is way smaller and I've thoroughly enjoyed this lens so I'll put that on a full frame body leave this on APS-C and see what we get. And now we just wait for the talent to arrive. Hi, Mirror. She should be here any second. Still 15 minutes to go. Time for a cookie break. Hi, so my name is Romana and um, this is my first time like being in an actual studio and all and I can tell you it's pretty pretty fun so yeah it's nice to meet the photographer and <laughs> and uh, yeah hi <laughs> all right let's head outside and take some photos all right we have some Christmas lights. That's nice. Let's see what we can do. Up. <laughs> Didn't freeze to death? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Whew, it is cold outside. Sometimes people ask if uh, I am unhappy that I don't have a lot of weddings to shoot in the winter, but I'm fine with... I don't like being that cold. And then some people would say, you know, why don't you move down south? Maybe someday. Maybe someday. <laughs> I have a secret to tell you. Americans might have noticed that you see Canadian YouTubers drinking a lot of Tim Hortons. But there's something that you don't know. It's not actually good. It's actually kind of terrible. Most Tim Hortons drinks are barely drinkable and their food is, well, is not good. So why do we always drink it and eat it? Well, why do you climb the mountain? Because it's there and Tim Hortons is everywhere. But if I happen to be having a photo shoot closer to something else, I get some better coffee. But to each their own. Cheers. Now, I am also getting this ancient Windows computer cloned and set up and ready to go because 
On the new M1 MacBook Pros, it's even more impossible to use Sony and Godox updating software. And I've always done it on this, but uh, we'll go a little bit faster now if I'm using an SSD. So I'm going to clone the drive to this SSD and then pop it in, and this should work so much better. I mean, it's 13 or 14 years old now, so you can only expect so much, but uh, it'd be nice if it wasn't a complete nightmare to work with. hours later. 20%? Uh. Uh. I thought maybe we could have a fireside chat. So, photo shoots are over. I don't really know if I have a way of getting the pictures from the photo shoot into this video. Probably not. I really hope that the audio coming out of this isn't terrible. I mean, I haven't edited the video edited the video yet, so it may well be. But overall, I've been thoroughly enjoying using this little thing, and honestly, it kind of makes me want to vlog more. Even though, if I have to be perfectly honest, I hate vlogging with a burning passion. I don't know if it's the, the constant requirement to be evaluating what you're doing in your life to see whether or not it's good content. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you guys don't like that concept either. But it's also that secondarily there is this other step to find the best or easiest way to be producing that content at all times. And that is where this makes life so much easier because I've had this clip on me for three hours now and I haven't turned it off and the battery isn't dead yet. So that's fantastically useful. It's very easy and the other side is powered by the camera. So yeah, I hope it doesn't sound like garbage because if it did that would be super disappointing. This comes in three colors. You've got black, you've got white, and you've got pink. I ordered it in white because I thought for casual use that actually might be more interesting. Ah, don't want to be too formal with a black one, and uh, I'm not daring enough to go pink just yet. And surprisingly enough, there's actually a headphone jack on the bottom of this receiver, which strikes me as being a little bit unnecessary. You'd think that they would just cut down on the size of it and cut out anything that you need. There's a pairing button as well as an infrared pairing receiver, so you can easily pair the transmitter and the receiver. On the receiver itself, there is a volume control, a power mute button, you got your USB-C charging, and of course the microphone on the top, the most important part. The receiver itself is very light in the hand, so it doesn't really yank on your shirt too much, so that's nice. Editing Wes here, and in the entire video I think we only had one tiny disconnect drop, so that was really good. I'm just a little bit disappointed in the audio quality. It is good, definitely better than just using the iPhone, especially at a distance, but it's not amazing. Altogether though, concerning the ease of use, the consistency, and so forth. I really, really like this. However, honestly, the biggest Achilles heel for this is the iPhone's auto volume leveling. So if you want to get a really solid volume level out of this, unfortunately, you'll have to use a third-party camera app, app like Filmic Pro where you can actually set the input volume because I found that the iPhone keeps adjusting the input volume to totally random levels, often making it way too low. But there you go, my take on the 7 Rims Remo mic. Back to you, Vlog Wes. So that's kind of my life update for this time being. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible with some, you know, more traditional content. But until then, if you want to get one of these, there's a link down in the description. And stay warm. Let's go take some photos.
It's alive. Well, it's kind of a zombie at this point. <laughs> 